Hi everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that some of the newer players might not be familiar with. It is a free software called Equilab. And the reason that Tom Dwan is uh, on this cover picture is because back in the day, 2010, 2008, I'm not sure exactly when, um, this would have been probably one of the primary ways that people would like grind out study on their own, you know. Being in the lab is was Equilab. It wasn't solvers before Pio, right? Um, and uh, why would you study with this kind of old school software when now we have access to a computer that solves the game perfectly? The reason is because, uh, as everybody knows, the computer uh, solutions are so complicated that most people don't implement them even close to correctly. Um, even when you're a very good player and you play a hand very well, there are going to be tons of spots where there are hands that the computer comes up with that uh, you would just never think of. Same as in like when you watch a chess engine play or something that's just moves that humans would never find. Same is true in poker. And so what Equilab does is it basically is a way of counting combos. Um, and because you plug all of the things in yourself, if you're a thinking human, and you are, you know, taking a step back after their hand and really running through every possible hand they could have very carefully, even if the player is much, much better than you, you know, they only had 60 seconds to act or whatever. So um, odds are that you're going to be able to come up with a really realistic picture of their range, right? I mean, if you have six hours to think of all of the reasonable and logical hands they could have, and they found one that you didn't, then you should probably move down in stakes because if they can think better than you in 60 seconds, there's a problem. Um, but yeah, in general, uh, you are going to find a solution using Equilab that is much more geared towards human play. So studying with the solver might give you ideas that you wouldn't have had otherwise, but if it's an idea that most people are not going to have in the first place, then Equilab is going to be a better solution. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense, and I think you're going to see the value of it when we run through a couple of examples where Equilab kind of confirmed or denied some of my intuitions that I had in-game. Um, okay, so here we can see on the bottom, uh, this is just something from Equilab where I'm kind of counting combos, uh, and I've put it here so that you don't see the uh, result of the hand to bias you. So uh, I'm in the cutoff, um, sorry, I'm on, on the button, cutoff is villain, fold, fold, and then the cutoff opens an I3 bet 8-7 uh, of, of clubs versus this reg. Not a totally normal play, like 8-7 would be mixing folds, but um, I think I was probably playing with like, uh, just seeing if I could get a little bit more out of line with the three bets here, or maybe I, maybe I rolled it, I don't quite remember. Um, so yeah, but anyways, it's fine. So I three bet to seven bigs. I get a call. Flop is ace of clubs, six of clubs, jack of spades. I see bet 30%. Cut off check raises. Uh, not quite pot. And I call. Turn is the five of clubs. Amazing card. I have a straight flush draw. I'm like, ship it. I'm going to get all the money. Uh, so uh, river is the ace of spades. And uh, villain shoves for 105% pot. I... I'm willing to bet that there are going to be some players here who have uh, a snap decision. Like, th this is pretty obvious, right? You have a flush, so you call, right? That's probably what some of you are thinking. But if you start to break down, actually, what hands get here, the check raises the flop that you beat, it's actually getting kind of tough to come up with enough. Right, so um, if he, and we'll look at this in the solver afterwards and see, you know, whether the solver agrees with this decision or not. And uh, if we find that the solver disagrees, then this is like all the more reason that Equilab is a, still a valuable tool, right? Because, uh, you know, if I look at my hand and the solver says, oh, it's a call, then I'm like, okay, I played it perfectly. But in reality, when I run it through Equilab here, I can see that it's actually hard for my opponent to be bluffing. And so uh, my fold. Um, is better than the solver thinks it is. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like, what hands, just take a second, like, pause the video for a second, and think what hands a uh, villain might check raise the flop with. Okay? So do that for a minute, and then we will um, kind of look at it in Equilab. Um, 
You know what, actually, maybe before we look at it in Equilab, we'll look at it in the GTO wizard, just to give you a sense of... So I, I fold the hand, and I think it's a, a very good kind of almost standard fold. Um, you know, it's one of those weird spots where I would say the fold is good in the sense that some players wouldn't make it, and at the same time, it's not really close. Um, so let me just see here. Okay, so we have a 3-bet and a call from uh, the button and the cutoff. Cutoff checks flop, button bets roughly 30%, cutoff check raises a little bit less than pot, right? Um, and you look at this range, there is some queen 10 of spades in there, there's a tiny bit of queen 10 of hearts and diamonds, it's mostly clubs, uh, but you know, so, so far hands that I would beat on the river, right? Obviously ace jack is in there, not in there pure, right? Um, so he's going to have less combos on the river and GTO wizard than he is potentially in real life. Uh, and then sixes is pure, and okay. So I call, um, which the solver is going to do with my hand. I don't know. Look, we can see if it uh, if it three bets my hand at all. Uh, no, pure call, right? So turn is the five of clubs. Cut off. Continues for half pot. His size is good. It turns out. Um, I couldn't have you know guaranteed that, but it is. And sure enough, ace jack suited when it gets here betting pure um let's see here you know uh is queen 10 of spades betting yeah queen 10 of spades is betting so you know we've got some hands in the mix still that we beat and then the river is the ace cut off is all in and button this is the button's calling rage so it's actually calling quite a bit and um you know it, it turns out that my exact combo ends up folding Right, so I might say to myself, "Okay, good fold." But on the other hand, ten eight of clubs, which is almost exactly the same hand, ends up calling. So I could maybe talk myself into saying, "Well, if ten eight of clubs is calling, then eight seven of clubs, like whatever, uh, it's like the same thing." And so my call is fine because ten eight of clubs is pure calling, right? Um, but uh, yeah, and then you know you even have some hero calls with like hands like uh, queen jack. No, this is flush draw. So yeah, so not too many uh, weird hero calls. Yes, King Jack off is a weird hero call. Um, so yeah, if I ran this spot through GTO Wizard, I might say to myself, okay, it's pretty close. Some weak flushes are calling. My weak flush called, whatever. But let's run it through Equilab and see if we get to the same conclusion. So uh, Equilab is this free software that you can download. I just Googled Equilab. You go here and, you know, it's like whatever. I'm not sponsored by Equilab. I just... It's been a piece of software that's around forever, and um, it's useful. Um, so you download Equilab. This is the thing that happens when you open it up. You put in your hand, you know, key, C for club, uh, the combos you have, and then you start to walk through all of the combos that they can have, right? Okay, so he's going to call Ace-Jack off pure, uh, pre-flop. Maybe he four bets at once in a blue moon, but, like, let's just say for the sake of the argument that he's not, we can always change it afterwards, right? So he's got Ace-Jack off. Cool, so that's 60 combos. Uh, he's got 6-6 six, six pure for sure on the flop. Maybe once in a blue moon he flops, but like let's just say he has a pure. Let's say for the sake of the argument that he's got queen 10 suited pure. Well, no, let's not. Let's just say for sure now he's got queen of clubs, 10 of clubs plus, right? He's got queen jack of clubs and king queen of clubs. Uh, let's say he's got jack of clubs, 10 of clubs. Let's say that he's got... Uh, what else can we think of, guys? Uh, you know, he's going to four, but he's definitely going to four bet jack some of the time. So let's give him one combo of jacks. Let's give him jack of clubs, jack of diamonds. Um, let's give him... Uh, yeah, I mean, so already it's kind of tough to come up with combos, right? Um, let's just say we have this to start, that his range on the flop is mostly flush draws and top two pair plus, right? Because he can't have jack six of clubs. Um, you know, if this river was like, um, I don't know, if, if this board was different such that he could have had counterfeit two pair, I would be a little bit more concerned about getting bluffed. But in this situation, he can't really have that. He can't have jack six of clubs, or uh, of hearts, rather. So we calculate this. Uh, I'm losing to everything. <laughs> so uh, I have 0% equity here in this sort of like pessimistic spot. Uh, we can find like a few bluffs there. Like we can try to give him some combos of... Queen 10 suited pure, okay? And let's give him 8 9 suited pure. Okay, so uh, actually 8 9, 
a9 doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's give him queen 10 suited pure. Let's give him king queen suited pure. Uh, so now, if he somehow gets here with king queen of hearts and he, he barrels all of the way, then I am not quite at the right equity to call because he bet more than pot. Uh, so I was getting almost two to one, but not quite. So even if we give him king queen of hearts and queen 10 of hearts and queen 10 of spades and queen 10 of diamonds and queen, king queen of diamonds, which like, eh, really? Um, we don't have enough equity to call. Uh, if you could have a hand with one club in it fairly easily, then I would feel a lot better about this call, but he really can't, right? Because um, his preflop uh, calls are almost all suited. He doesn't have queen 10 off. He doesn't have queen jack off. doesn't have king queen off, really. So maybe he has some king queen off, but not really. So this is a, a spot where it's, it's pretty tough to um, find enough bluffs, right? And again, going back, the solver doesn't care that I can't find enough bluffs as a human because it's a solver and it will find enough bluffs. And because of that, um, ten eight of clubs, you know, gets to call. And even my hand turns out is actually pretty is a fold. So uh, I think that is a very reasonable fold, and it's a good example of where uh, some players would just say, "I have a flush. How can I fold? If I'm folding this, I'm folding everything, and just click call." Um, but you know, it turns out I can I can have ace jack here. I can have sixes here. Um, I can have aces here, I can have uh, better flush draws here, I can have tons and tons of hands that are better to call. So it's really, um, yeah, just a spot where he can't be bluffing and I can find other calls. Uh, and I just think it's a very good fold. So yeah, just to show you, you know, I fold and da da da, nothing else to see there. So the, the other thing that doing this uh, in fact, the most important thing that doing this will yield for you is not just double checking after a hand is played whether or not you played it well, but instead it's going to get you better at counting combos, right? The more you practice this, the faster you'll get at it, and eventually you're going to get to the point where you are more accurate at counting through the number of combos they could have in game and calculating whether or not you've reached the equity threshold necessary to call or shove or whatever it is. You're just going to be better at counting combos the more you count combos with equal that, right? And so this is the uh, the other added benefit is not only are you learning kind of an equilibrium that is more human than the solver, but you're also practicing the only skill you'll ever have access to as a human in game. You're not going to be able to think like a solver in game ever. Maybe you'll be able to memorize some of its lines, but more likely you're just going to be able to count combos for, for most human mortals, unless your line is love. So this is like a really excellent way to get better. And a, a lot of players I see, um, you know, that I'm coaching at micro stakes, when they see the flop, they think of like four hands. And it's like often it sets and nut flushes and top two pair that they're thinking of. In this case, those are good hands to think about. But for the uh, most part, what I'm feeling is that they're missing really, really wide swaths of the opponent's range that is possible. Okay, so that's why... Um, this is an issue. I just want to talk about one more example, um, and this is an example where I did not think in terms of combos, instead thought in terms of my best guess at theoretical knowledge, and it, it resulted in what I believe is, is a very bad call, and I'm going to explain why. So um, I'm playing here a player who is much better than me, a player who plays higher stakes than me, um, a player who I know, and this is 500 and L. I know this player is capable of massive bluffs, and I know that this is a red line player. Um, so I even think maybe because the fish limps in this hand and I, uh, raise the fish's limp, um, he might be thinking, uh, I can squeeze really wide versus Sebastian because, uh, he's going to be raising really wide versus the fish. So I'm already kind of leveling myself. But anyways, uh, in this spot, we get to the river, um, and he shoves for about a pot size bet. Um, minimum defense frequency means that I should have to call half the time in order to make his bluffs indifferent. So this is a principle of game theory optimal. I can maybe explain it better in a later video if you leave comments saying you want to know about it. Um, but point is, usually here you need to call half the time uh, at least. Uh, I think about the possible hands I could have. I think it's very difficult for me to have a full house. There's like six combos of that I can have. Uh, seven if you count king-queen suited. Um, and, you know, I'm 
not really flatting ace king off very often here realistically so uh it's just very difficult for me to have a good hand i can have king jack suited and king 10 suited that's two combos it doesn't i'm adding them up and it doesn't seem like i have a lot of strong hands so i conclude a hand like pocket nines is going to have to call some percentage of the time i roll it i get like a 20 which is out of 100 and so i just decide i'm going to call um when I looked this spot up in the solver later, I discovered that the solver is actually not meeting minimum defense frequency, which it almost always does. The reason that usually happens is because the three better or the aggressive player, the player who jams, can have so many good hands that it's like they can't even find enough bluffs. And when that ends up being true, the solver no longer meets minimum defense frequency. So that seems to be the case in this spot. And um, if I understood that correctly, then, uh, you know, pocket nines never has to call. So this is yet another example of how uh, thinking GTOE can really get in the way of making good plays. And I probably thought GTOE because this guy's so good and like I just have to play like a robot versus him. And instead I ended up playing worse. Um, when I start doing combos uh, that he can have here. Um, okay, so he's got eight combos of ace king. He's got... Um, let's say, uh, one combo of king-queen uh, suited. He's got three combos of queens. Queens would play this hand exactly the same. He's got two combos of king-jack suited. He's got two combos of king-ten suited. Uh, he maybe has uh, 1.5 combos of pocket eights. I'm not sure. Um, so this is 9, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and a half. Uh, I may be missing... No, I mean, I think that's a good start. So this is, you know, I'm doing this fast because this is how I should do it in-game, right? We're not going to plug it into Echolab here. So this is 17.5 combos. Now I have to think about how many combos of bluffs he can have. And remember, we're thinking in terms of equity here, not minimum defense frequency. So I'm getting 2 to 1 on the call. I have to um, win the pot um, over half the time. And it's actually pretty tough to think of combos that I'm sure he has. So first of all, he has to get to the river and realize it's tough to have a bluff and decide to fire all of his backdoor clubs that bricked, right? Well, let's say that he does that. So he's got ace four, he's got ace five, he's got ace jack suited, he's got ace queen suited. Um, actually, no, he doesn't have ace queen because that is uh, a good hand. So uh, maybe we'll say he's got ace ten suited. Um, let's say he's got jack ten suited. He's got 10 9 suited. Okay. So these are all the club combos you can have. I've gotten up to 3, 4, 5, 6, and it would need to be at like 9 ish in order for the call to be profitable. The difference between 6 and 9 is actually quite large. So equals 6 combos. And remember, these are all clubs, right? So they're one combo each. Um, and remember, most good players, their first instinct is to give up clubs on the river because i could have turned like a 10 9 of clubs or something and so he doesn't really want to have a 10 of clubs uh i could have yeah like ace jack of clubs myself and he doesn't want to have that that hand so you know he might if he doesn't think about it too long he's playing too many tables he might be tempted to give up those combos and when you factor all of that in this call ends up being like very very iffy and as a general rule if uh even if you kind of reach break even uh, you should usually lean towards fold because even very good players it's tough to find enough bluffs in in certain spots especially a spot like this so yeah uh with all of that um uh said uh this is like yet another example of how uh equilab can be really valuable yeah so that's it for today um if you guys would like to see another equilab video i can do some examples where i play versus fish and just to wrap up the video, I wanted to remind everybody that I am offering coaching for microstakes players, which can be found at collipokercoaching.wordpress.com. So I hope everybody has a good rest of your day and uh, run good. Take care.